let me get my computer going. Jump on. Give me five more minutes just to get the legs going. All right. So these are good workouts on Sundays. I have to admit, during the week, I get a little nervous. On Sunday, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's an endurance workout. It's not so hard. Heart rate's not so high. You can kind of settle into a nice, nice, comfortable pace. And that's good, too, for our brains. I think sometimes when we constantly are doing really hard workouts, it's hard to keep yourself motivated to go at those paces. So doing these endurance or zone three type work is not just good for the body, it's good for the brain too. So we need that little bit of relief, which is a exa great example is Randy. You know, doing all those classes, the body just can't do it anymore. And he's doing a lot of high intensity stuff. So because it's so high intensity, it's really tough to get motivated every day to do things at that level. So that's why these zone three workouts are so important. So start to incorporate them into your workouts once we start getting back outside on a regular basis. I think we're getting a little tiny bit of relief. Um, some things are opening up, but we're still at risk. You know, I mean, still have to take those things they're asking us to do with wearing a mask when you're outside and all that is still in place. So we're gonna keep that stuff in line until, I don't know, I don't know what the breaking point's gonna be, but we'll figure that out when we get there. We just gotta keep each other motivated. I'm happy that I can do that and keep everybody safe and indoors. So. Today I titled this workout, Can You Endure? Because that's what it's all about. It's just about endurance. So we're gonna do kind of a time ladder with certain times with uh, recovery of them that's gonna kind of keep you in that endurance zone. So our first one's gonna be five two minute efforts with just 15 seconds in between them. Then we're gonna to go to four three minute efforts with a little bit more rest in between, 30 seconds. And then we're gonna do three four minute efforts with a little longer rest in between, 45 seconds. So remember that zone you wanna to try to reach. Each one of those, we're gonna kind of walk around Remember in zones, there's a bottom part of the zone and a top part of the zone. And we're gonna play around in those zones if you can make that happen. If you don't have heart rate numbers, and I know most of you do, a couple of you don't, Brian I know wants to totally do a heart rate test. <laughs> Monique, probably the same. Elise, I'm sure you probably, or do you have, you have numbers, cool. All right, and Sandy, you don't have numbers, do you? No, okay. Jen, do you have any numbers? Yes, all right. I know Lillian might, uh, both Lillians, we've got two Lillians on the screen. Wayne, you have an Earl, and Leslie, I know you guys have numbers. So today we wanna work around in those, in those zones. We're gonna play around in them, and the rest is gonna determine where you're gonna stay, and obviously, as you well know, the cadence also has an effect on those zones. So those of you that don't, if you're using a rate of perceived exertion, which is a scale from one to 10, you should be sitting at about a six or a seven. And you should be able to, your breathing should be natural. You should be able to talk. You shouldn't be able, you should be, and if your legs are burning like crazy, then you're going too hard. So you wanna keep all that stuff in mind as we move through this. Of course, the first set to just get the legs going, we're gonna push the limits a little bit. And then if time permits, we might push the limits a little bit at the end, just to 
shock the system, jump it out of that endurance zone, and get it working a little bit harder. All right, so I want everybody, once you get in your small ring 19, think about that, that's about four gears down. We're gonna do a cadence ladder. Every 15 seconds, you're gonna increase your cadence. You're gonna start at 85. Three, two, one, hold an 85. Leave it right there. Don't go any faster you're going to jack this up as we go. Next, you're going to go to 90. Feel the increase in the cadence. Feel the legs start to burn a little bit. Bring it now up to 95. Holding on to 95. Now the heart rate will start jacking up. And give me 100. You should be able to hear the differences in the cadences. Three, two, one. Easy gear, 15 seconds. We're going to do three more of those builds. Back down to that 19. Here we go. Three, two, one, 85. No higher, no lower. Ninety. Use the sound if you need to, if you don't have a cadence monitor. Each change of cadence should hear a little increase. 100, I'm sorry, 95. And the last 15, 100. Really get it going. Three, two, one. 15 seconds easy. Two more of these. So just a reminder to you guys, if you're not using chamois cream, you might want to consider it. Right back to that 19. Right at 85, three, two, one, eight, five. So especially on a day like today, we're gonna be doing a lot of sitting. I'm gonna talk about 90. Some other options, if you don't have Real chamois cream, 95. Time for the fan. Last 15, 100. Three, two, one. Nice and easy. One more of these. So that chamois cream is important, especially when we're sitting so much. We have all kinds of friction points on the saddle and the chamois cream helps. So you can go for the expensive stuff or you can go for the cheap stuff. All right, back down to that 19. Starting at 85. Here we go. Don't go any higher. It's okay for it to feel easy. 
Nali. I should see the change in your leg speed if I can see your legs. Ninety-five. Dialing it in. And that last one, 100, 15 seconds. Good. I like it, I like the changes. Three, two, one, easy gear. Nice and easy. All right, I'm not gonna put a lot of time in between efforts today. Because I want you to stay nice and consistent in that zone. It was cool. Earl sent me his chart from Thursday, his file. It was fun. That was a fun workout. Had all kinds of peaks and valleys. And the second half mirrored the first half which was really cool. So today, all you want is these nice steady blocks. That's what we're looking for. So I'm sure he'll share with me his workout from today so I can see that for him. All right, so we're gonna start in. You're gonna go one easier gear than your 19, which is either gonna be your, your 21 or an 18 depending on what kind of gearing you have. Here's what I want you to remember. My gearing selection is a, is a suggestion. If you can't get to the zone, make changes. The consistency I want you to hold is the cadence. So the cadence is your, your, your solid point. Hold the cadence, get the gearing to be right, so you're getting in the zone. All right. We're gonna do five two minute efforts in your small ring around your 17, 19, 21. In those three years, cadence 90 to 100, heart rate zone three, three, two, one. Let's go. And I know you guys can hold the top of this zone. So if you get to 100 and you're seeing that right, Dead on, hold it there. If you pick the right gear, remember it's gonna give you a little bit of time to get the heart rate up. This one's only gonna get 15 seconds in between each of these. So your heart rate will stay pretty consistent through this whole 11 minutes worth of work. And heart rate's delayed, so it might take you a little bit of time to get to where you want to go. Remember, the legs shouldn't be burning. You should be able to talk if I were to have a conversation with you. Who's right where they need to be? We're one minute in. All right. A little sideways, a little... People are getting there. Good. It also takes the body a little bit of time to settle into what we're asking it to do. So, by the time we get to the third block, the body will be like, oh yeah, I've been here before. I know what to do. So when we get to our 15 seconds of easy, all I want you to do, stay in that gear, just turn your cadence down, literally to 80, because it's gonna go super fast. We're coming up on it. Three, two, one, 15 seconds easy. Take a drink, remember the drill. Gotta finish that bottle. Hopefully you have two for today because you might need two bottles today. Here we go. Right back at it. Three, two, one. 
100 cadence. I know you guys can hold that. Don't cheat yourself out. Dial it back in. Now in 15 seconds, the heart rate's not dropping much. So it'll just be a little tiny blip down and then right back into it. This is such great base training. I've already heard from a couple of people who've been doing the trainer sessions. They're amazed at how great they feel. So that's good. Now, as you're doing these, I want you to always think about those body positions that we constantly talk about. Keeping that upper body still. Hips should not be moving. I literally can hold on to my hips and all that's moving is my legs. So find yourself doing that. If your hips are rocking, it could be a couple of things. Your seat might be too high. Jen, which I think your seat is too high because I see you rock a lot. Even when you sit up, you might, you're still feeling that, which means you're having to go down there to get to the pedal. So think about that as something that might be a possibility. That goes back to having a fit on your bike is really important. When your bike is fit properly, then everything fires in the right way. All the muscles can work. Three, two, one, stay in that gear. Just bring the cadence down. That's two down. 15 seconds, and then right back at it. Three, two, one, here we go. Who's holding 100? Give me a thumbs up for 100 people. Good, I like that. I know you guys can consistently hold 100, so if you're in the right gear, 100 is not going to be that bad. You're going to be able to hold the right zone. Now you're probably already noticing just after we've done four or five minutes worth of effort, the body's starting to react. Legs are feeling good. You're getting consistent with the heart rate. It's settling in. And you're feeling good as you just pedal along and hold that proper cadence, proper heart rate. Everybody's looking pretty strong here this morning. And happy Mother's Day to all those mothers in the room. It's a beautiful Mother's Day. And obviously, you're getting to do what you want today. Randy said to me, a couple of our friends and people that we know, even family, are like, what are you doing for Mother's Day? And they all go, we're not cooking. And he looked at me and he goes, is cooking a big thing? I'm like, yeah, cooking's a big thing. It takes a lot of time, especially if you have a family. So hopefully, no cooking for you guys either today. Three, two, one. Down to 80. Ooh, you love when I talk. They go by fast. <laughs> they go by super fast. And the sweating process is starting. Three, two, one. We're on to number four. Four or five. Dial it back in. Should be able to go right to it. Holding on to it. So I did a workout on Friday, a weight workout. I told Randy, I said, man, I must have done something because the tops of my thighs 
are still hurting. So either it was our workout on Thursday, or it was my workout on Friday, or it was a combination. So that's good. That's showing a little bit of weakness, which is okay, and showing that you need to strengthen those parts. So that's how we pay attention to what our body's telling us. It's a pretty smart, smart being, that's for sure. Knows when you're tired, knows when you're sore, trying to tell you something there. Knows when you're hungry. I don't know, I'm worried. With all those chocolate chip cookies in this house, I gotta hide them somewhere. I have to sabotage them and hide them tonight. 30 more seconds. Sticking to it. Feeling the consistency. Who's drinking? On those 15 seconds, give yourself a drink. 10 more to go here. I'm right at 100 if anybody's following my legs. Three, two, one, bringing it down. Four down, last two minute effort. All right, here we go. Last one, three, two, one. Pay attention to what the heart rate's doing in between those in that 15 second period. How many beats are you dropping? It might only be five, 10. Good, Sandy. That's perfect. That's about what it should be doing. Remember, that's showing your level of fitness. The faster that heart rate comes down, the more fit you are. We're all getting very fit on these trainers. I don't know if I told you, but when I was racing, I always loved the winter months because I did all my training on a trainer because it was cold and snowing. So whenever those first early season races came around, and actually our first race was in January in California. I always felt the best because I'd worked really hard through the winter on the trainer. So these miles are good. Think about it. You're not coasting. Your legs are never stopped. Unless we do the head case intervals. That's the only time your legs are actually stopping. So if you're doing an hour workout here, it's like doing an hour and a half to an hour and 45 outside. So that's good. That's good solid work. 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Shift to an easy gear. You're gonna get one minute easy. Take a drink, towel off. Let the body recover till we go to the next one. All right, so the next one, a little bit longer, but you're gonna get a little bit more rest in between. So that's when you really wanna pay attention to how many beats your heart rate's coming down. We're gonna do four three minute efforts with 30 seconds in between. But here's the drill, a little harder gear. Small ring 15, don't go there yet. Cadence between 80 and 90, if you can hold that. If that gear is too heavy and you're getting way out of your heart rate zone, then shift up to an easier gear. But I'm trusting you guys. Normally I'd be looking at your watches, making sure you're in the right place. Now it's all on the honor system. All right, so find that gear. Small ring, 15. So remember, you're 15. You're going to have four or three gears 
underneath your chain. So if you want to look back, 80 to 90, if that makes it happen, if you need to shift to an easier gear, then go for it. Three, two, one. Three minutes here. 80 to 90. You should be able to hold that. Because remember, when the heart, when the cadence is lower, the heart doesn't have to work as much. The legs are what's working. I'm at 88 right now, cadence. Settle into it. Let it just work its magic. And again, might take you a little while to get where you want to go. It can be a little boring, these workouts, but they're really effective. Three minutes is what we're doing here. 30 seconds in between. I want you to really pay attention to those in-betweens. So I talked about using some kind of chamois cream. Here's some, uh, some chamois cream options. If you can't get to your bike shop and get yourself some chamois butter or ASOS cream or one of those, when I was racing back in the day, chamois cream wasn't hugely popular. And I had some teammates who would use Noxima as their chamois cream. Now, for those of you that know Noxima, it has a little bit of menthol in it. So for me, I was like, no. Not using that, but actually it does work. Just have to be careful where you're putting it. <laughs> so might have to have a, uh, uh, a separate demonstration, female, male seminar. This is where the guys put it. This is where the girls do it. 30 more seconds. So we're done with our first three minute effort. So I've had people ask me if Vaseline is a good option. It's not. One, it's gonna ruin your shorts. And two, three, two, one, stay in this gear, 30 seconds. Bring the cadence down to really low, like 70. So Vaseline, it will, it's rub factor, meaning if it's rubbed on over and over and over again, it eventually goes away. These other products, especially chamois products that are made specifically for this, they actually are made so that it can rub and you don't have that problem. All right, right back to that cadence. Three, two, one. Number two, 80 to 90, right on to that zone three. Now you might be more in the middle for this. Depends on what gear you're actually selecting. Hopefully you're staying close by one gear or another. I'm at 85. I like it. Settling in. Working on all those parts that need to function. Think about your feet. Are they flat? Your toes are pointed. You're using the fronts of your legs. If your heels are down, you're using your calf muscles a lot. 
So if your seat height's right, you should be able to just comfortably pedal with your feet flat. Glutes are working, especially in this gear. That cadence shouldn't be too hard to hold. I'm dead on to 85. I've been holding it for the whole time. No change to it. That's the other thing you want to work on. See, during these time frames, you can keep that cadence right where you started the entire time. It's hard. It means you have to pedal evenly. And you have to concentrate just on the cadence. Forty-five seconds to go on this one. Don't forget to take a drink in between, during. Also help you get used to grabbing the bottle while your legs are moving, which you should be able to do out on the road. 15 seconds. If you feel like you're getting in a trance, that's a good thing. This is a zone three trance. Three, two, one. Bringing it down, two down, two more to go. Take a drink on these breaks. Ten more seconds. Then you're going to dial right back into it. Three, two, one. So whose heart rate went down further than ten beats? In between. Good. Good. A couple of you. Nice. So part of that is attributed to we're leaving it in a little harder gear, but you might be going too hard during the three minute effort if you're not getting the recovery. A little bend in the elbows, shoulders are relaxed. No fancy background for Wayne today. Come on, man. We're counting on you. That's your thing. All right, Tuesday. Better see something good on Tuesday. I mean, you don't have anything else to do during the day, so. <laughs> Got to make a good background. All right, consistently at 85 for me. Man, this workout's going fast. Sorry, 22? Crazy. Can you imagine if you were just sitting here looking at nothing and doing a workout? I don't know how people do that. <laughs> Gotta have a motivating factor. Either a good workout that's been written for you, or something motivating on the TV. Two minutes down, one minute to go. Effort number three. Middle of that zone to upper part of the zone. This one, you shouldn't be near the bottom. Because you're sure putting out a pretty good effort. 30 seconds. Four. 
Take a deep breath. Settle those hips back in. I love it when I take a deep breath. I feel actually my pedal stroke change so much. Five, three, two, one. Bring down your cadence. Three down. Last one coming our way. Woo! Now the sweat fest is really happening. And I forgot to get a towel. I was hoping Randy would walk by again so he could get me one. But I'll just keep sweating and I'll feel like it's a really good workout. All right, last three minute effort. Right back into it, three, two, one. Dial it back up. Yay, here he comes. Could I have a towel, sir? Could I get some more? Thank you. Do some burpees for them. <laughs> he said no burpees. Yeah, we'll see what tomorrow brings at 7.30. I'll hear him down here jumping around. I'll come running down. No burpees allowed this week. It's burpee free week. All right, you're dialing it in. Here's another one that you can consider as a chamois cream. Vagisil. I think they still make that. Uh, benzocaine is the active ingredient in this. So it does have the antiseptic properties, which we want. So it'll kill those little bacteria. And it's not so bad. Has the same kind of consistency of a chamois cream. So it will work. And then of course, the other benefit is if you have an infection that you don't know about, it'll take care of that too at the same time. It's like a commercial. Use Vagisil for your cycling needs. It's my broadcast television production coming out in me. That's what my degree's in. I was supposed to be a DJ. Here we are, right down the street. And we've got Jen in front, followed by Elise. Now I won't go into a whole race. I actually did do a cool internship when I was in college. I worked for an organization for the blind. And they did what they did on a regular basis was they provided information to people obviously who couldn't read it. So every day I would read sections of the newspaper since they didn't have the ability to do that. I would say, okay, here's the cover story in the sports page. And they would get information through the radio station. It was pretty cool. Three, two, one, small ring, easy gear. That last one went fast. One minute easy. Take a drink. We got one solid set to go. Now here's the cool part about this one. You're gonna get even more rest in between 45 seconds. So the body will be able to recover a little bit more. We're gonna do three four minute efforts. So that's a total of 14 minutes. It's gonna put us right at the top. So we might go a little over today. That's okay, because I know you guys are committed to making this happen. So the gearing for this one is, I want you in your big ring around your 21, which is gonna be about three gears down from your largest cog in the back. 
Your cadence, 80 to 85, no higher than that. If you need to switch, shift gears to get right into that cadence again, do it. All right, big ring, find that gear, couple of gears down, 80 to 85, four minutes, here we go. Just dial it right in. And again, like I said, if the gearing is not making it happen, then shift to what you want, what you need to get there. So if the heart rate's getting too high, then bring the cadence down to the bottom level of that heart rate zone, 80 to 85. If you're reaching up into 90 and you're holding that zone, that can be okay too. Because this year isn't too, too hard. So I'm actually at 90 myself and I'm holding right where I need to be on my power meter. So dial that in, settle it in, you're one minute in. So you should be right back to that heart rate zone. This one, same thing. You're probably right in the middle of it. Body's also getting used to the effort. So it's settling in. All right, here's another one that I'll help you guys with not just needing a, cream, a chamois cream, but you can actually use Preparation H. Who would have thought? <laughs> so if you have any hemorrhoids, it'll help shrink those hemorrhoids. <laughs> Lillian's shaking her head. <laughs> In addition to helping you with any saddle sores that you might have, because it'll shrink those. So this one actually has multiple uses, not just a chamois cream, but it can also help you with your saddle sores. So if you're getting a saddle sore, a couple of different things might be happening. One, your shorts might be way too old. That's typically the first thing. Two, your seat might be in the wrong position. So you may either be trying to get to that pedal stroke, your hips are rocking, causing that friction, or your seat may not be forward back in the proper place. So seat position, can have a huge effect on getting saddle sores and getting rid of saddle sores. So consider those things. And the last thing is not using any chamois cream. So that chamois cream is really important because the material they make the chamois out of, it may feel soft, but over 20 miles, starts to get sweaty, starts to get a little rough. So that chamois cream becomes an important aspect. Uh, chamois butter makes little individual ones you can carry in your pocket. So along the way, if you need to reapply it, you have that available. So those little sample sizes are good. I use chamois butter. I know other people like the ASOS product. There's a couple other ones out there. Chamois butter seems to have the market right now. 10 more seconds. Then you're gonna get 45 in between. Three, two, one, stay in that gear. Spin nice and easy. Take a drink. One down, two more to go. I like that four minute one fast because I was talking the whole time. And it goes fast for me too when I talk. <laughs> it's not just trash for you guys. <laughs> and I have to admit, it's way different here than it is when I'm in the sessions. 
What are you saying to me, Jen? Let me check you, girl. You just want a longer rest. Does chamois butter get on the body or on the chamois? Good question. Let me get you guys started and I'll answer that. Right back to that cadence. Second of three, four minutes. Three, two, one. Let's say 80 to 90. So, talking about application of the chamois cream. So, you can actually, if you watch the pros put their chamois cream, they literally turn their shorts inside out and lather a whole bunch of it on the chamois itself. Then you can actually put some on your body parts too. So, think about when you pedal. Where does the friction happen? It's literally where your leg meets your crotch. So that little channel, that's the most important part to really put that chamois cream. Because that's where the friction's happening. Most of the stuff down the middle, it's staying steady. It's, it's just sitting there. So it's not doing any friction. Unless you feel like you need just a little bit to help you through. Now, the other part to think about is the fact that if you're having problems in the saddle area, it might not be no chamois cream, it might be the wrong saddle. So, there's so much going on there. The saddle, in my opinion, most important piece of equipment on your bike. You have to be comfortable in your saddle or nothing else is going to happen. So if you're having saddle problems, when you can, get to the bike shop, get a sits test done to determine the width that's appropriate for you in a saddle, and then find one that works. Now, the cool shop stop part about most bike shops is they have sample saddles that you can actually use for a period of time to determine if that's the right saddle for you or not. SMP has a program. They've got amazing saddles. That's what I use. And I know there's other companies like Trek. You can return their saddles. Specialize, same thing. So the companies are getting smarter. I really think if I were in the bike industry, I think bike manufacturers should sell bikes without seats so that the bike shop is required to do a sit phone test and give the customer the proper saddle. And that doesn't happen. Every bike comes with a saddle and in my opinion, most bikes come with the crappiest saddles they can make. So, none of you guys are in the bike shop industry. Maybe I need to get a hold of some of my friends, talk to them about that part. But, they don't see it as important. I always negotiate. I say, hey, I don't want this saddle. Can you swap it out and see if they'll do it? Some shops will, some shops won't. It all depends on who the owner is, how the shop works, all of those politics. All right, that one went really fast. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Staying in that gear. 45 seconds easy. You should almost be done with that water bottle. I see Leslie taking the last drip. That's good. Hopefully you have another bottle, which she does. Perfect, hanging out. We got one more of these guys. I like that. 
really right on it. Like I said, we're going to go a little over today. I hope you can uh, stick with me. Because of course, if you're a mother, you can just stay there. Jen, another one. How do you know? Oops. She's just trying to get me to give you more rest. How do you know when your saddle is worn out? Very good question. So the best part about knowing when it's worn out is you take your finger and push down the top and it has a lot of flex in it. Done. Definitely done. All right, let's get into the last one. Three, two, one. 80 to 90. Dead on into zone three. So, uh, the other way is a lot of people can rub the side of the saddle with their thighs, start getting a rub point like Randy does. When he starts putting electrical tape on it, then I know it's time to get a new saddle. So first, just a wear factor. If you're seeing pieces of the saddle, if it's made out of leather or some kind of synthetic leather, leather if that leather initially, let's say it had little tiny bumps on it, if those bumps are gone and it's completely flat and you see no sign of those bumps, then it might be time for a new saddle. If you're getting excessive saddle sores, time for a new saddle. And like I said, if it's starting to feel like there's a lot of flex when you push down on the middle part and the back part, then it's definitely time for a new saddle. So take a look at that, see what you think. And then uh, the bike shops are actually doing a pretty good job of doing things properly. They'll actually have you put their bike, put your bike on a rack outside. You'll talk to somebody from the proper distance about what you need done. Then they take the bike inside. So there are ways to get what you need right now from a bike shop. And man, an industry that thought it was going to probably die during this is actually doing really well. People are getting back out on bikes. People are buying bikes. We just got to get those people that are buying them to wear helmets <laughs> and to ride properly. That's the scary part. They don't really have any bike handling skills. They don't know the etiquettes of the road. Need to be some lessons for those people. But it's good to see people out. It's good to see the bike shop industries succeeding. All right, let me give you a couple more. You're 240 in. Another one, I'm not sure how this would work, but tea tree oil? I don't know about that. It's a little thin, in my opinion. Leslie says, nope doesn't work. So I wouldn't consider that. I know there's been some, and Lillian can attest to this, there have been some recent things about Neosporin that aren't so great. I actually have recommended to people in the past who have had minor saddle sores to use Neosporin. It seemed to help cure those pretty quickly. So that's something to consider, but you might want to consult with your doctor about that one. Um, if you're getting a lot of saddle sores, a really good thing to do is actually sit in a tub. Get yourself to get a soak, a good soak, but just make sure you're drying off really well afterwards. Three, two, one. Small ring, easiest gear, spinning the legs. 
Woo! That was perfect. I love that. Let's just spin them out. So, you guys did 14, 28, uh, 30, 39 minutes of zone three work, which was really good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sandy's giving it a thumbs up. That's perfect. So these kinds of efforts, remember, when you do zone three work, it's hard to do a really long, consistent run. Crotch guard, who's saying that? Brian, crotch guard, never heard of that. He's throwing up another one. Oh, he's giving it a thumbs up. Might have to check that one out. So that's another chammy product to consider. Do you buy it online, Brian, or do you buy it? Yes, online. So if you're willing to take a, oh, it's a spray. Wow, that's different. So if you're willing to take a chance on a new product, that might be the one to consider. Try, see if you like it. Come back and give us a review. Okay, that's what we should do next time. Everybody have one product, come back and you'll give us your review. <laughs> It's like, it's like getting, you know, like a food review. Oh, the pie was really delicious, but the crust was not so great. The crust is everything in a pie, for those of you that don't know. All right, so I am going to keep spinning for a couple more minutes because I want you guys to cool down. This one today, hopefully the mothers in the group are gonna get off their bikes. And they're gonna have this spread of breakfast waiting for them from their families. I hope that's it. Lillian's shaking her head down there, saying that, yep, 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 that's gonna be happening. I hope that's happening. I don't see Randy in the kitchen making breakfast for me. But everybody have a great Mother's Day. I want you to keep on spinning. I'm going to open up the phone lines in a minute. You can chat a little bit while you continue to cool down. Keep safe. Keep doing what we can. Like I said to you guys last week, I'm going to continue to do these as long as it takes for us to get our lives back into some kind of normalcy. And once that happens, then we can start going outside again on a regular basis these as much as you have. So keep on spinning the legs. I'm going to come open up those phone lines. Great job, guys. Really great job. <laughs>